Hey class, Miss Anderson here. Today we're going to learn about solving polynomials. And we're going to solve poly polynomials mostly with factoring and the use of the quadratic formula. So just to review, we could extend our knowledge when we were factoring with quadratics and we can apply that to our quartic polynomials when we're factoring. So um, we have a trinomial, so we can think of this as A, B, C, similar to what we did with quadratics. And then we find factors of A, C, so it multiplies up to negative 18, that would add to negative 7. And that would be negative 9 times 2. And then you can use a box, but it's not necessary since A is 1. And the only way then to make, well not the only way to make X squared or X to the fourth, but we're going to do X squared times X squared. It's not technically the only way because you could do x cubed times x. But you want your middle term to be x squared, so you want to use x squareds. And then these numbers become our factors, so x squared minus 9 and x squared plus 2. And we can multiply that back out, and we would see we would get x to the fourth, and then we would get 2x squared negative 9x squared, which would make negative 7x squared, and then negative 18 on the end. So it, it does factor back to what we started with. And then hopefully we notice that we have a difference of perfect squares here. And so this one factors more to x plus 3 and x minus 3. However, this one does not because I could find factors of negative 9 that add up to 0, 3, and negative 3, but I cannot find factors of 2 that add up to 0, because it's 1 and 2, 2 and 1, negative 1, negative 2. So it only works when they're perfect squares and it's subtracting. So that would be done. So now we're going to take our methods of factoring, and we're going to use it to solve. So just a reminder, we're using the zero product property, which says if you have like a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. So that was our zero product property. And we're going to use that to help us solve today. So 2y to the fourth minus 18y squared. I noticed that they're both divisible by 2 and a y squared. We have four y's in this term and two y's in this term. So I can take at least two y's from both. So I'm going to take out a 2y squared, which is going to leave me with just a y squared in the first term minus a 9 in the second term. And then y squared minus 9 is different so perfect squares, so you can factor that again. So you get 2y squared, y plus 3, and y minus 3. And then we're going to apply our zero product property. In this case, I have a times b times c equals 0. I have three factors that include a variable, so a, b, and c. And if either of these three are equal to 0, then the whole thing would be equal to 0, because anything times 0 is 0. So if a was 0, this would be 0, if b, etc. So you're going to solve this using that idea. So you're going to have each term with a variable, so 2y. Set that equal to y squared equal to 0, y plus 3 equal to 0, y minus 3 equal to 0. If 2 times y squared, so divide by 2, we're just going to get y squared equals 0. Take the square root, you're going to get y equals um, plus or minus 0, which is just y equals 0. So I got two answers from that factor term because I did get plus or minus 0, but there's no positive or negative zero, it's just zero. So we have two double roots, or we have a double root at zero. And then this one we would subtract, we'd get y equals negative three, and this one we would add, and we'd get y equals three. So I have four answers here, two of them are zero, and then negative three and three. Notice that it was a quartic function, and then I have those as are my solutions. So let's try this one. This is actually an example of difference of perfect squares because 4x to the fourth is the same thing as 2x squared squared and 36 is 6 squared. So you have an a squared minus a b squared which factors to a plus b and a minus b. Similar to what I did with the y squared minus 9 in that example. So this would factor to 2x squared plus 6, 
times 2x squared minus 6. And then it's equal to 0. Now, 2 and 6 are not perfect squares, so I can't factor this anymore. And only the minus 1 would be a potential for that. So now I'm going to use the zero product property to solve. So I'm going to say 2x squared plus 6 equals 0 and 2x squared minus 6 equals 0. And then I'm going to solve each one. So on this one, I'm going to add 6. So I'm going to solve by square roots, which means I'm going to get the x squared by itself. So isolate that. So add 6. Then you divide by 2. We get x squared equals 3. Take the square root. Um, square root of 3 is irrational, which means it's kind of a yucky decimal. And I'm going to leave it then as a rational, like irrational, like exact answer. That's the word I'm looking for. I want an exact answer instead of a irrational yucky decimal that you would have to round. So we're going to leave it as positive and negative square roots of 3. Solve the other side, but this one's going to start with the first step. It's going to be minus 6. So you're going to get 2x squared equals negative 6 which means when I divide by 2, I'm going to get x squared equals negative 3. And then when I take the square root of a negative, I'm going to get um, imaginary answers. So the square root of 3 is still irrational, that yucky decimal. But then we had um, a square root of negative 1 in there as well. And the square root of negative 1 is i. So this one's imaginary answer. So four answers total again. Two of them are imaginary and two of them are real. And my cortic function had four solutions. Okay. If you recall from quadratics unit, when we're solving with more than um, one x term, we have to have the equation equal to zero. So we'll have to start that out here and subtract that 18 over with the rest of the terms. Notice that 18 is a constant, so I'm not able to combine it with any of the current terms that I have. So I have x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9x minus 18 equals zero. Now I see four terms, which is going to be a factor by grouping problem. I'm going to use the box to do factor by grouping which just helps me. So factor by grouping, you group the first two and you group the last two. And when you put it into the box, it's just helping you organize that grouping. So you put the first two is your first group. And then the last two in the second row is like your second group. Then you take out the greatest common factor from each group. So you take out the greatest common factor here, and it's going to be x squared. If you took out the greatest common factor here, it'd be negative nine. I usually start with this and this is so x squared times x and then x times negative 9, then negative 9 or x squared times 2. So taking out the greatest um, row, greatest common factor from each row or column works too, or finding one spot and then going from there. So then these are my factors. So I got on the top, I have an x plus 2, and then along the side, I have an x squared minus 9. And then this does technically factor more to um, x plus 3 and x minus 3, this one. But since you're solving, you can stop here and just say x plus 2 equals 0 and x squared minus 9 equals 0. So on this one, you would subtract 2 and we get x equals negative 2. And then here we would add 9 and we get x squared equals 9. Take the square root and we would get x equals both positive and negative 3. So in solving, uh, you don't have to factor all the way down if you, if you don't want to. I could have rewritten this as x plus 3 times x minus 3. Either way, I would get the same answers. I got x equals negative 2, positive 3, and negative 3. Notice that this polynomial started as a cubic, and I got three answers for that. Okay, so using factoring and then the quadratic formula to solve and find all of our solutions to the equation. So this one is perfect cubes, it's sum of perfect cubes. We have 
8x cubed, which is the same thing as 2x to the third, and then 125, which is the same thing as 5 to the third. And it's so I have an a cubed plus a b cubed. And so I can use this formula here, a cubed plus b cubed equals, where a is going to be equal to 2x and b is going to be equal to 5. So I can go ahead and factor that. It's going to be a plus b in my first parenthesis, and then a squared. Oops, I meant to put a 5 in for the b. Then a squared, it'll be 2x squared, and then it's minus a times b, 2x times 5, and then plus 5 squared. So reducing that or multiplying it out a little bit, 2x squared is going to be 4x squared minus 10x plus 25. And then it was equal to 0 from right here. So I'm going to finish solving this. So I'm going to take each factor, set it equal to 0, 2x plus 5 equals 0, and 4x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. Unfortunately, this trinomial doesn't factor anymore. Um, it would need to have two of these terms in the middle because it has to multiply to 4 times 25 is 100. And we're supposed to get to negative 10, which is impossible. If it would have been negative 20, it would have been a perfect square trinomial. And then it would have factored more. But it doesn't. So when you're solving after you factored a sum or difference of cubes, you'll have one linear factor. So you can solve this one by just subtracting the 5, dividing by 2, and we get negative 5 halves. And then the quadratic factor is not factorable, so you have to use the quadratic formula to solve it. So we got a equals 4, b equals negative 10, c equals 25, and it's x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So your x would be equal to it's negative 10, so it'd be positive plus or minus the square root. Negative 10 squared would be 100 minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times 4, which would be 8. So 4, 4 times 25 would be 100. So this would be 400. Um, I don't know what that is. 4ac, so, and then b squared was 100. So I'm going to get 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 300 over 8. And 300, let's see, I know I could do 100 times 3, and then I could do 10 and 10, which means I could take out a 10. And there'd be a 3 left over, so I made a perfect square there. The square root of 100 is 10, so that can come out front. And since it was negative 300, it's going to be 10i, and then square roots of 3 all over 8. And then these are all even, so I could reduce it even further. Um, you could factor out a 2 on top and get 5 plus or minus 5i square roots of 3. And then I could take out a 2 on bottom and get 2 times 4. And now I have 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So you could reduce this to this answer too. So la final answer, 5 plus or minus 5i square roots of 3 all over 4. Let me just zoom out one more time so you could... Pause that quick if you needed to finish writing it. I'm going to do that one more time. The sum and difference of cubes. Okay, so to solve with um, uh, exponent or this x cubed, we have to have it equal to zero still. So we'll subtract that one over. Get 27x cubed minus one. So we do have perfect cubes because 27 is 3x cubed. And 1 is a perfect cube, too. 1 cubed is 1. So that means that we could use a be 3x and b would be 1. This time it's minus, though. So I would use this formula over here, a cubed minus b cubed. So my parentheses are going to start with a minus. So it's going to be 3x minus 1. 
and then it's 3x squared, which would be 9x squared. And then it would be 3x times 1, which would be 3x, and then plus 1 squared, which is 1, equals 0. Then set them both equal to 0, and them, I mean both parentheses, both factors. So 3x minus 1 equals 0, and 9x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. The linear factor you can solve just by inverse operation. So 3x equals 1, divide by 3, x equals a third. But the quadratic one, since when we factor using these formulas, it will never go any further. When you get to the quadratic and you want to solve, you have to use the quadratic formula. So a equals 9, b equals 3, c equals 1. The x equals negative b, which would be negative 3, plus or minus the square root. b squared would be 3 squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times 9. So it would be negative 3 plus or minus the square root. It would be 9 minus 36 all over 18. Ne negative 3 plus or minus the square root, let's see, 36 minus 9. Oh, excuse me, I'm tired. Um, 9 minus 36, negative 27 all over 18. Now 27 has a perfect square under it, 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And so 9 is a perfect square, so you can take the square root of the 9. It is negative, so it's going to be imaginary again. And then there's still 1, 3 left under there, because you can take out the square root of 9, but not the square root of 3. And then the square root of negative 1 comes out as imaginary, and then it's all over 18. And this time, you could divide these all by 3. As long as all three coefficients divide by 3, you can do it. Um, because what you're doing is you're factoring out a 3, and you're leaving it with a negative 1 plus or minus just a 1i square roots of 3. And then on the bottom, you're factoring out a 3 as well. And then you end up with 3 divided by 3, which is just 1. So we don't have, we can take the 3 out and like get rid of it. So a negative 1 plus or minus i square roots of 3 over 6 would be the final answer. Let me just zoom out there a little bit. So. Can write that all down or pause it if we needed to. So it's a lot of work. So it requires some serious practice to make sure we can get all the steps correctly done, but completely doable. Thanks for watching.